सहनावतु सहन भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्त मिद्विषावह शांति 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 Um, we will just chant the verses which we have studied so far. Uh, you may repeat after me. Okay, Sayra. <coughs> Arjuna vacha evam satata yukta ye. भक्तास्वाम पर्युपासते ये चाप्यक्षरम्यक्त के योग श्री भगवाच मैया वेश्य मनो ये मित्युक्ता उपासते श्रद्धया परयोपेता ते मे युक्त मथा ये क्षरम निर्देश्य अव्यक्त पर्युपासते सर्वगमचित कूटस्थमचल ध्रुव सन्नीयंद्रियग्राम ते प्राप्नुवन्ति मामेव सर्वभूतहितेरता क्लेशोधिकतरस्तेषाव्यक्ताक्तचेतसाव्यक्ता गतिर्दुख देहवद्भिवाप्य ये तो सर्वाणी कर्माणी मयि सन्यस्य मत्तरा अनन्ये नैव योगेन माम ध्यायन्त उपासते मुद्धर्ता मृत्यु संसार सागरा न चिरा पार्थ 
மையாவேசிதேதாம் மன ஆதி புத்தி நிவேஷய நிவசிஷி மையேவ அதூர்வம் ந சம்சய அத்தம் சமாதாத்தும் நோஷி மயிஸ்திரம் அபியாசோகேன தத மாச்சாப்தனஞ்சய அபியாசேப்பியோசி மத்கர்மோமி கர்மாணி குவன் சித்திமாப்சி அத்தைதப்பியசோசி கர்த்தும் மதோகமாசிர்மலம் ததக்குரியத்மவன் ஷேயோஹிஞானமாசாத்ஞானாத்தியனம்சிஷ்யேனாத்கர்மலத்தியாத்தியாத்தாந்திரனந்தரம் அவேஷ்டாணுணவோரமோக்கமி சந்துஷ்டசத்தோகிமோபுமிய யமர்ஷயோயிரிய அனபேக்ஷுச்சிர்தக்ஷீனோகவியோமிய everyone just to recollect um, so these are 16 verses which we have studied so far um arjuna asked the question to krishna you know which kind of devotee is better the one who worships 
with four with attributes or the one who worships the one the lord without attributes and without form and then krishna launches into this discourse from the second verse to the 12th verse he is talking about various paths of bhakti how it has to be practiced and so on and he basically says whichever path you take there are certain qualities a certain manner in which a devotee worships the lord and then he also gives the options available for a devotee who is unable to be in that final state you know based on where they are he says different approaches can be taken up by a devotee and from the 13th verse onwards uh, lord krishna is talking about the qualities of a bhakta a devotee how that devotee will be who will be dear to him so the best among devotees so he is listing so which we have looked at from the 13th onwards so the four verses i think we have looked at so far uh today we will be looking at three more so that in a nutshell covers all that a devotee is the one who is very very dear to the lord so today we are going to look at three of them uh so let's start saiva yo na hrishyati न द्वेष्टि न सोचति न कांक्षति शुभा शुभ परित्यागी भक्तिमान्य स मे प्रिय यो न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि न सोचति न कांक्षति शुभा शुभ परित्यागी भक्तिमान यह समे प्रिय यो न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि न शोचति न कांक्षति शुभा शुभ परित्यागी भक्तिमान यह समे प्रिय इट्स लुक एट लुक एट वर्ड्स लेटर्स विच वी हैड टू पे अटेंशन टू वाइल चांटिंग इट yon hrishyati in that hrish dash is a cerebral sh so the tip of the tongue should point to the top of the roof of the mouth mm-hmm. na dveshti again that sh comes up again na sochati na kanksh that ksh this letter is made up of three consonants ng ik and ish the third third consonant ish is cerebral ish so pay attention kankshati and the second line shu bha the second letter bha is uh, is the fourth letter in the pa varga or pa class of letters um so it has to be aspirated okay with extra air and some stress shu bha okay then the next one is shu bha this bha is also the same so it has to be aspirated parityagi bhakti man the bha in the bhakti is also an aspirated consonant so uh, you should give extra air and stress a bit bhakti man yes same priya there is no other aspirated consonant uh, let's look at the sandhi split each word separately splitting the sandhi okay the first letter first word is yaha यदा यह द विसर्ग हैज बिकम ओ दैट्स हाउ यू गेट यो बिकॉज़ ऑफ संधि यह न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि न सोचति न कांक्षति नो अदर चेंजेस ड्यू टू संधि इन द सेकंड लाइन आई हैव स्प्लिट दिस वर्ड जस्ट सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हिच आर द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ दैट कंपाउंड वर्ड दैट इटसेल्फ इज वन वर्ड शुभ इट्स अ समास Uh, some masa is a compound word okay shubha and ashubha becomes shubha shubha 
the b and a becomes bha okay shubha shubha then parityage here there is no sandhi is there there's no changes to the letters here bhaktiman ya actually it's two separate words which is bhaktiman and ya bhaktiman ya the next set, so word is saha here also visarga is there but it gets dropped because of sandhi so it becomes same priya when it's split it saha me priya okay so those are the sandhi splits we can look at the meaning of the words yaha yaha means who whoever that kind of meaning whoever na hrishyati na means it's a neg negation okay not okay hrishyati is the present tense verb sing singular third person hrishyati hrish hrishi means to be rejoicing so one who is happy with certain turn of even certain circumstances one becomes very happy elated so one is not elated na hrishyati who is not elated yaha na hrishyati na dveshti dvesha we have also looked at it in the verse i think the 13th words adveshta sarva bhutana means who does not hate so na dveshti so the same is stressed again because some of these qualities krishna is repeatedly stressing so na dveshti means he does not hate so one who does not rejoice or one who is not elated and one who does not hate na sochati soch such means to feel sad to feel sad so na sochat mean he does not sorrow that means he does not give give room for sorrow he does not feel sad that's also a quality of these are qualities of a devotee so he does he does is never elated he doesn't hate anyone he does not have sorrows of anything he doesn't feel sad about anything na sochati na next one is na kankshati kanksha means desire thirst for something yearning for something so na kankshati means he does not desire anything or he does not yearn for anything or he does not crave for anything na hrishyati na dveshti na sochati na kankshati these all verbs okay hrishyati dveshti sochati kankshati he does not do these things okay the next one next word is shubha ashubha parityagi okay parityagi means renouncing okay pari the word pari means appropriately renouncing what has to be renounced it renounces parityagi okay i have used the word maybe i should uh, <laughs> properly or something okay so as required it renounces that means parityagam means you use it to the extent you need and then you give it up so as if anything in this world you take use it accordingly and give this away so that kind of parityaga is renounces as required means he gives up in this world okay shubha and ashubha shubha is all auspicious things and all are inauspicious for both they will not cling on to when it has to be given up it gives it up so even our life actually is given by god it's auspicious when it's used well but when the lord says come you give that and go that is parityaga so that ability to renounce as and when required that that quality is parityaga tyaga is to renounce parityaga means as it requires to renounce 
the next uh, word is bhakti man bhakti means all of you know is devotion a uh, suffix is added called mat bhakti mat or bhakti man bhakti mat is the root word bhakti man is like dhanavan i mean one who has money that that kind of meaning so bhakti man means one who is full of that so bhakti man is one who is filled with devotion okay who has devotion to a great extent okay bhakti man yah who so whoever has all these okay qualities that bhakti man who okay that way also you can say okay whoever is such one who is filled with devotion sah he may 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 has two meanings i said one is to me it can also say my who is dear to me okay who is dear one to me priya is dear one other means you can say he is my dear one which way also you can say sir may priya a certain sense of possessiveness also the lord has okay is dear to him so that is the verse let's um, i have one excerpt of swami let's go through that मोहम हित्वा प्रियो भवति क्रोधम हित्वा न सोचति कामम हित्वा अर्थवान भवति लोभम हित्वा सुखी भवति दिस द वर्ड्स व्हिच स्वामी सिंगिंग बिफोर द डिस्कोर्स एंड लेट्स लुक एट द डिस्कोर्स Embodiments of love. Swami is starting the discourse. Moham hitva priyo bhavati. So it says, as long as one is proud, men will not like him. Okay. Only when he suppresses his pride, will he be liked by one and all. Krodham hitva na sochati. the man filled with anger will have no happiness he will be immersed in misery when he subdues his anger he will be free from grief kamam hitva arthavan bhavati when a man has insatiable desires he will never feel contented when he controls his desires he will be truly rich lobham hitva sukhi bhavati a miserly person will never be feel happy when he gives up greed he will realize happiness i picked it up because of two words which is um, to go back priya the lord is calling one a priya and na sochati so this verse tells us how we can get over these qualities of um, uh, get over uh, the sochati the sorrow itself swami says when we give up krodha we will not have sorrow okay um then the other word says i think you can moham is pride is what swami says we pride itself is a type of delusion that we suffer from which as long as that is there we will not be dear to anyone others will not look up to us as a dear person okay people will not like us when we have moha okay so we will um, go to the next verse समह शत्रु च मित्रे च 
तथा मानापमान शीतोष्ण सुख दुखेशु समसंग विवर्जित सम शत्रौ च मित्रे च तथा मानापमान शीतोष्ण सुख दुखेशु समसंग विवर्जित सम शत्रौ च मित्रे च तथा मानापमान शीतोष सुख दुखेशु समसंग विवर्जित सम शत्रौ च मित्रे च तथा मानापमान शीतोष्ण सुख दुखेशु समसंग विवर्जित Let's look at the letters to which you have to pay attention. Samaha, Shatrao, Chamitre, Cha, no aspirated consonants. Tha, Tha. The second letter, Tha, is an aspirated consonant. Tha, Tha. Manap, Maniyoho, no other aspirated consonant. Shitosh. This Ush is a cerebral Ush. Ushna, Sukha. Sukha, the Kha, is the second letter in the Kha Varga, so it has to be aspirated. Sukha, then Dukhe, that K also is second letter in the Kha Varga, so it has to be aspirated. Shu, cerebral Sha, so tip of the tongue should point to the roof of the mouth. Sukha, Dukhe, Shu. Samaha, Sangha, Vivarjitha, no aspirated consonants. Okay, so let's um, look at the um, Sunday split. Samaha Shatrau. Here there are no changes due to Sandhi. Cha mitre cha tatha mana apamani yoh. I have split this word. Mana and apamana yoho. Na plus a becomes na. Okay, mana apamana yoho. The next word has a few sandhis there are, because there are four words uh, combined. Shita plus ushna becomes ta plus u becomes to. Okay, a plus u always becomes o. So ta plus u becomes to. Sitoshna. Uh, here there is Sandhi, but there are no changes. Sukha, Dukeshu, no changes, even though there is a joining of words. Samaha, Sangha, Vivarjita. Okay. Uh, we can look at the meaning, word to word meaning. Samaha, Samaha. Is one who is equal minded. Okay, equal minded person is Samaha. Okay. The next word is Shatrau. Shatrau is the uh, seventh noun form of the word Shatru. So, seventh Vibhakti or seventh noun form. Of the word Shatru is Shatrau. Um, the seventh Vibhakti basically means in, on type of meaning. Okay. Uh, so the on enemy. Generally, if you see most translations, they will say to an enemy. Okay. Equal minded to an enemy. But in San, the to an enemy has to be either the second. Vibhakti um, or second noun form or the fourth noun form. But the, the proper translation is on an enemy or in an enemy, but in this case, on is a better uh, use, is my, in my view. Because in English, when you translate, it may not make sense, um, but I'm just trying to translate each word as it is. Okay. 
it's on an enemy chase and mitre on friend so you can say on uh, an enemy here i think just if you want to be proper in english on a friend ch okay sama shatra uch mitre ch so one who is equal minded on an enemy as well as on a friend that means he will treat when he look looks at a shatru also he will be of the same state of mind when the person looks at a friend also he will be of a state same state of mind so this the person state of mind has not changed but the person will recognize someone as shatru but he will be unaffected by that perception also so a devotee will see somebody okay that's an enemy or oh, that's a friend but with both of them the, the person's demeanor will not change inner demeanor the state of mind should not change samaha chatravucha mitrecha so you can imagine krishna is teaching this to arjuna in the battlefield he is going to fight so he is going to fight enemies but he should be equan equanimous his mental state should not be affected his emotion should not be affected so that is samast okay so ami calls that the samadhi itself samadhi means to have that steady mind which is unruffled it's always balanced okay tatha tatha means in the same way or likewise mana apamana yoho okay mana apamana yoho um is also same vibhakti uh, seventh vibhakti or seventh noun form of the word yo mana apamanaya okay up so this is um, what's called a second uh, dual uh, in sanskrit there are singular dual and plural you know there are three numbers um the nouns take different endings based on whether you're talking about one thing or one person or two things or two persons and uh, three things or more okay plural so this two is there that's how the end is. yoho comes okay mana apamana yoho mana means honor apamana is dishonor so that means people honoring someone or people dishonoring someone okay so tata mana apamana yoho so likewise just the way shatru and mitra friend and enemy even in honor and dishonor this person should have sama state is in the balanced state equanimous state in honor and dishonor the next one is there are four words which come see sheetha ushna sukha and dukha eshu okay so because there are four qualities put together in the one word so that's plural so eshu that uh, the shu comes when there is a uh, it's a seventh noun form of a plural word okay um so it means in cold sheetha in ushna heat in sukha that is in happiness and in dukha in sorrow so when the situation around one is either cold hot comfortable happy happy or the circumstances also sorrowful sad one person will be always sama will be equal minded samaha okay so all dualities will not affect this person and the next word is sanga vivarjita sanga means any form of association okay to be with somebody to be to be with or to join a group 
is Sangha. Vivarajitaha means one who gives up. So one who transcends, see, Varjita itself means absence of Sangha. Okay. Varjita itself is absence of any association. Vivarjita also means one who transcends. One who transcends even abandonment. What it means is the person will not crave to run away from somebody. Or the person will not crave to be with somebody or some association. One who will transcend that is Vivarjita. Um, Sangha Vivarjita. So that's why Swami says, be in the world but not of the world. That's what it is. We have to be in the world but we should not be of the world. It's like Swami would say, just like the drop of water on a lotus leaf. It is on the leaf but it does not associate itself with the leaf. It will just roll off when it has to. Uh, so that quality is Sangha Vivarjita. The water drop is not affected whether it is in the leaf or not in the leaf because it's completely detached. It has transcended that Sangha. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is not affected whether it's there or not. Sangha Vivarjita. Uh, we'll go to the, because this, this verse and the next verse come as a pair because the, the sentence is not complete. It's, uh, he's just talking about his devotee by these qualities. Okay, he has not even called them a devotee yet. But he says one who is equal-minded in shat, with enemies and uh, friends, whether it's, there's honor or dishonor, whether it's cold, hot, whether it's happy or so, sad, the person will be same because he is Sangha Vivaj, he transcends it all. Okay. Then we'll go to the next verse, which is the 19th verse. Pulya Ninda Stutir Mauni Santushto Yena Kena Chit. Aniketah sthiramathir bhaktiman me priyo narah. Tulya ninda sthuthir mauni santushto yena kena chit. Aniketah sthiramathir bhaktiman me priyo narah. Tulya ninda sthuthir mauni Santushto yena kena chit Aniketah sthiramathir bhaktiman me priyo narah. Uh, let's look at uh, any specific letters which have paid attention to. Tulya ninda stutir mauni, no aspirated consonants. Santushto, the ush is cerebral isha. Santushto, yena kena chit, no other aspirated uh, consonants. Aniketaha, no aspirated consonant. Sthi, this, the, this tha, the tha is second letter in the tha varga. So it has to be aspirated. So sthi, sthira matir, bha, bhaktiman. So that bha also you have to pay attention to because it's an aspirated consonant. Bhaktiman me priyonara. No other aspirated consonant. Uh, let's look at the Sandhi split. Okay. Split of the Sandhis. Tulya ninda stuti hi. Okay. In this, there are three words, but there are no changes to any of the, the sounds or letters. But there are three words Tulya, ninda, and stuti. The stuti he, the visarga, becomes ir because when it joins the mauni. So visarga becomes ir. 
So that's how you get Sutir Mauni. Okay, Stutir Mauni or Stutir Mauni. That's a Sandhi. So if you split it, it's Tulya Ninda Stutihi Mauni. The next word is Santushtaha. Santushtaha. The Visarga at the end, ha, becomes O because of Santi. So that becomes Santushto. But it's Santushtaha. Without the Santi. Yena, Kena Chit. No change. Aniketaha, no change. Sthira Matir. Here, because of Santi, but it's Sthira Matihi. The Visarga has become Ir because of Santi. So Sthira Matihi. Bhaktiman. So it becomes Sthiramathir Bhaktiman. Okay, the Visarga becomes Ir when it joins. Otherwise, it's Sthiramathihi. Bhaktiman. Bhaktiman may we have put it together, but there's no change. It's just written differently. Bhaktiman may priyo, Priyaha because of Sandhi becomes Priyo. Again, the Visarga at the end becomes O because of Sandhi. Priyaha Naraha, it becomes Priyo Naraha. So those are all the changes due to Sandhi. Uh, now we can look at the word to word meaning. Tulya Ninda Stutihi. The word Tulya. The word Tulya comes from the word Tula. Tul or Tula. Tula means it's a balance, you know, a, when a weighing scale. So what happens is in a weighing scale, it, it's called a balance, okay? Where you weigh, weighing balance. So that always has to be without any change, any movement. When you weigh something, you won't have it equally. You put some weight on one side, the other side, that should be balance, in balance. So it comes from the word Tula. So Tula means one who is equanimous, always in a state of balance. Tulya. Okay. Ninda. Ninda means when people abuse. Oh, I see. One who is equanimous. I, see, I forgot to in raise and abuse. Okay, sorry, I don't know how I missed it. Ninda and Stuti. Then, you know, in, in people, Carnatic musicians will say Ninda Stuti also, they will say. That means some of the composition of uh, dirt and devotees, they'll be, they worship, but they also do uh, pack it with abuse. You know, you didn't look after me, you are neglecting me, things like that. Some devotees, that's called a Ninda Stuti. But here is one who is in ninda, which is abuse, stuti, praise. In both, the person will be state of balance. Okay. Tulya ninda stutihi. One who is equanimous in praise and abuse. The next word is mauni. Mauni means one who is silent. Okay. Silent is not external silence. It's also inner silence. External silence is easy, easily attained. Inner silence means the mind should not talk, think to itself. You know, not analyze things too much. It should be always in a state of silence. Uh, it will only speak or think as it's required. But most of the time, the, it should be silent. Just the way that we should not be speaking as much as possible, the mind should not be thinking also as much as possible. That is Mauna. Okay, that Mauni is a devotee who does not think too much, not talk too much, not even act too much. So it, 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 it's Mana, Spark, Kaya. In all three Karanas, you know, it should be silent. So physically also we can be very agitated in action. Okay, we should be calm in our demeanor, 
take an action in the word so also we should be aspiring as possible not talk much or mind also should not be thinking too much that is mauni okay mauni santushtah one who is satisfied um, i would tushta itself is to be happy or to be contented um so you can say one who is well satisfied you know you can put that also because some has certain auspicious quality i don't know whether well satisfied is a good word but one who is appropriately in in completely satisfied santushta mm -hmm. so the, that's a devotee yena kena chit so the santushta hai yena kena chit it is a usage in sanskrit yena means by which by what kena means by what by who no if you individual break it okay chit is a thing okay yena kena chit means with whatever is given to that person whatever that person has that person will be santushta we already looked at santushta satatam in one of the earlier verses always contented here is is with anything they are content whether they have it or not also they are content that quality is santushta so you can imagine the importance being stressed uh, important being given to certain qualities by lord krishna okay santushta yena kena chit with anything okay santushta yena kena chit the next word is aniketa um niketa means residence one of niketa okay um, so niketa means one who has taken residence aniketa means one who has not taken residence so that means the person does not have a fixed abode which means it mean means um um swami always gives a story of you know a sanyasi in who renounced everything and went to kashi or uh, ketarnath or badrinath or somewhere and apparently every day he used to go and sit on a boulder you know he used to go collect his food from some ashram where they were giving free food and he'll come and sit on a particular boulder and eat and uh, one day when he came with his food and he found somebody else was seated there just a boulder you know out in the open somewhere so he told that person no this is my boulder and that person said what is your boulder this is public property i am sitting so apparently he argued and they started fighting with each other and somebody had come and stop it and swami tells this story and says sometimes we renounce everything but we get attached so he became attached to that place where he was seated so one should not be fixed wherever one is uh whether it's our body we should not be fixed in it our the home if that goes we should be willing to move on a uh, type of thing that is the tend that's a quality of a devotee aniketa even if he resides in a home he should have the feeling that he is not belong to this home uh, such a person is aniketa it's not in some places they will say he doesn't have a home which basically means he will not identify himself to a particular place and tie themselves to that okay aniketa huh? is one who doesn't fix himself in an abode okay aniketa huh? sthira matihi sthira matihi matihi means mind matihi means one who has that particular state of mind sthira means steady so one with steady mind is sthira matihi so devotee will always have a mind which is always steady never wavers 
once it decides because theorem is what is he firm with one point of devotion to the lord that will not be shaken that will be steady that devotee is thira mathi one who has a very fixed steady mind it is never fixed abroad but the mind should be steady it should be fixed bhaktiman we have already looked at the word bhaktiman one who is filled with devotion okay one who is imbued with devotion is bhaktiman me my or to me priya dear one narah man the lord has even used the word narah here so it it is you know subtle meaning swami always says um, just because we have a human form we cannot consider ourselves human unless we evince human qualities so here you can say he is the man dear to me so it also means such a person only is a man so all the qualities which swami has listed which means means these are all human qualities we have to possess even to call ourselves human beings um so that also comes through in this uh yeah so we have covered all these qualities so with this actually this is the 19th verse with this uh, all the qualities of a devotee are described by shri krishna um so we'll look at the an excerpt which i have the lord has revealed to arjuna and thereby to all mankind that he is pleased by the devotion offered by aspirants for grace bhakti man me priyo narah he declares the devotee offers prayer worship and his thought words and acts to god whom he clothes with a form and name and attributes like love compassion wisdom and power most devotees seek health wealth power and fame from god which are all trivial assets yielding momentary pleasure divine grace can confer the most precious gift of his love many may assert with the pride of achievement that he loves god that takes him only half way through he does not gain much they are from that thing should be does god respond with me may priyona raha so i think i should put uh, he is dear to me only then man can only then can man claim to have achieved grace how can man become dear to god so that's a question swami is posing so let's see what he says the gita emphasizes two qualifications santushtah satatam ever contented and drida nischaya with firm resolve he has to be contented and cheerful always without regard for the changing tides of fortune it should not be a pose a passing phase an artificial superficial show the prefix sam indicates that the tushti contentment has to be deeply rooted in the heart manifested in and through every thought and act the other word for contentment is tripti the all pervading never changing form of tripti is also denoted by the prefix sam it changes it into santripti santushti fills the heart with 
divine light, delight. It marks the stage of detachment from the world. For the world makes one swing from pain to pleasure and back again. The devotee therefore must desist from attempts to earn joy or avoid grief. He has to be unconcerned with ups and downs. Success should not boost his ego, nor should defeat land him in dejection. Honors should not turn his head, nor dishonor make it droop. Equanimity, serenity, these are the signs of Santushti. The devotee welcomes gratefully whatever happens to him or is given to him by the divine will to which he has surrendered his own will. Dhrida Nishchayam, firm resolve is another requisite. Of course, all men possess this qualification. It is an asset that assures survival and secures popularity and preeminence. Those who climb Himalayan peaks derive the tenacious courage that sustains them from the firmness of their resolve not to turn back. Others exhibit their heroism in crossing tumultuous oceans alone. Some others resolve on exploring fearful forests. Firmness of resolution, bravery and skill are utilized even for merciless torture of others to rob them of their riches, ignoring their inner divinity and setting aside their humanness, some people descend to demonic levels and become fanatically cruel. We have to conclude that Dhrida Nischaya, Nischala, or Swami has used the word Nischala here, can serve good purposes as well as evil. This is a discourse from 20th November 1990. I picked this up because almost every line of uh, Swami's uh, words is what we have already discussed in the chapters. Um, if you look at Swami has talked about some, Swami has worked about Tushti, okay? Santushta Satatam Swami has spoken about. If you go further up, he talks about Bhakti Man, okay? Please pay devotion. the word full He's telling who is a Bhakti Man. The devotee offers prayer, worship, and his thought, words, and acts to God, whom he clothes with a form and name and attributes like love, compassion, wisdom, and power. Okay. There are a few, a couple of other excerpts. Maybe I will share them next week. And um, see, also, he. See, the devotee welcomes gratefully whatever happens to him or is given by him. Given to him by the divine. Yena kena chit santushtaha. Santushtaha yena kena chit. Whatever is given. Okay, Swami is talking about honor should not turn his head. Dishonor should make, nor dishonor make it droop. Manapa mana yoho samaha. Okay. Uh, the ups and downs. Sukha dukha. You know, success should not boost. Na khrishyati. Na dveshti. So, you know, um, all the qualities which are described are nicely explained by Swami. And of course, Swami is talking about other, which some of the other qualities which were in the previous verses which we studied, like Dhrida Nishcheha. Also, Swami has discussed here. Um, so you can take a read and um, that, will sh that should sort of explain to you the words in the Bhagavad Gita. That's all I had prepared for today. And so I will stop here. Any, if there are any questions, uh, and if I have an answer, I will share with you. Sai Ram, everyone. So I guess there are no questions. If there are no questions, then maybe we can close the session. We have one more verse only left in this. Uh, so what I'm hoping to do is we will chant 
all the verses a couple of times. So I'm planning at the next week, it will we'll chant all of all the verses we have studied now. Then we'll take up the last one. And also just, uh, I want to I may spend a bit more time in a few excerpts from Swami's discourses. Then maybe we will chant it once more. And that will bring uh, the chapter 12, study of chapter 12 to an end. Um, thereafter, I'm planning to take a Bhaja Govinda, as mentioned last time. Uh, and that's all I have to share. I'll stop here. So if everyone is okay, we'll close with Samastha Loka and Shant Sai. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sai Ramadu.